All right, guys, we are live. Episode 198 of the Shooter's Mindset. Man, they're updating shit on me now. Even the Google thing is different. Like, there's different noises, and like, I think I'm live. <laughs> I should be live. All right. Episode 198 of the Shooter's Mindset. Thank you guys for tuning in tonight. Co host today is Jennifer Seymour. What's up, Jen? Hey, everybody. Fresh off of victory at Gap Grind. Oh, right? my gosh. Shout out to I'd... 1,000 yards. Hitting 1,000 yards with a 308 to victory, at least. Mm -hmm. I did it twice too. I was excited, and I hit a mover at 500 yards, which I was scared of. It was like it's it moves, it like constantly goes across the back of the berm, like back and forth, and you have to hit it. And it's like a 12 inch plate at 500 round. I mean 500 yards. It was fun. There you go. Uh, Nikki's joining us here shortly. She had some computer issues. Uh, ghost uh, guest and star of the hour is Josh Freilich. What's going on, Josh? Not much. Thanks for having me. It's good to have you on here. Um, it's one of those, I actually wanted you on the show for a while now. I don't know why. It's kind of like one of those things I scroll through people's Instagram feed. Oh, I need to get them on the show, but then keep scrolling and then forget to actually send a message. <laughs> so yep. we got you on. You've been one of those people. I got a few more of those people on the list. I just got to reach out. Um, but we got a couple. We got a good show here. Hopefully, uh, Nikki's coming off of, uh, uh, what, a top 10 finish over at, what is it, Girl in a Gun match or something like that? Yep, the ladies so, match. She did good. I mean, we always say she's seventh in the world, but she got like ninth or eighth. Eighth. Don't so don't I guess, steal her. I guess she's like eighth in the world now, but it's still still pretty good. Um, announcements here. Uh, definitely uh, show sponsors here. Dang, it's been a while. Last week we had some uh, technical difficulties on the same computer that I'm on now. Opened it up. We were supposed to have Hunter Kale on the no-handed shooter, and screen didn't want to turn on just went black so hopefully it runs uh had someone look at it so hopefully we're good for this show show sponsors the folks over at tactical shit all right shop.tacticalshit.com got a discount code coming from them uh later on in the show uh they got everything man they got i've been getting tons of emails i don't even know if i should bring this up i'm not even gonna bring it up but there's this thing that you put on a stock I don't know. They're kind of hot right now. I don't know <laughs> if you want it. Uh, if you want it, it seems like they have them over at Chop That Tactical Shit. Uh, and I don't know what I didn't click the email and check what the prices were, but I think they're I think they're going for a solid price. Um, check them out. All right, they have tons of stuff: apparel, uh, uppers, Adams Arm Piston uppers. They got it all. Glock custom customized work over at Tactical Shit. All right, the folks at Tandem Cross. That's TandemCross.com for all your rimfire needs, parts. You got that old twenty two. Uh, Ruger in the house, and you got some broken parts, need to get those. They got it over there. Check them out. If you want to put your questions in throughout the for the live show here, we got a link that just went up on uh, Facebook, the Shooter's Mindset Facebook page. Uh, you can go over there, post in the comment section, and Jen will be screening those. So if you want to talk to Jen, put them on over there. If you feel like talking to me and giving me more work, you can also do so on the Shooter's Mindset. Uh, when you're, If you're watching it on the Shooter's Mindset YouTube channel, top right-hand corner, you can just plug in a question there. We'll get it out to Josh. Or if it's a question for us, we'll answer it live during the show. What else we got? Uh, giveaway. We got a giveaway courtesy of the folks over at the kind folks over at Vortex Optics. And Josh himself put this together. Yep. Obviously, Josh is a sponsor shooter from Four Vortex Optics. So, what are we giving away, Josh? And how how are we doing this? I got a couple of links, and I'll I'll go over how we're doing it. But let us know what we're giving away. Yeah, so um, I'm giving away, or Vortex is giving away a uh, three MOA uh, Razor Red Dot, uh, the same stuff I'm running on my gun. So I run these Razor Red Dots on PCC, on my pistol, on my shotguns, and uh, just a great competition optic. Nice and bright, good, uh, good for just about anything you want to throw it on. Boom! There it is. Uh, the link for to enter this giveaway is over on the Shooter's Mindset uh, Facebook page. I will have a direct link in the description box of the YouTube video if you're watching after the live broadcast. Pretty much all you got to do is go over there, put your name, last name, and email address. But take advantage of all the bonus entries that you can get. If you like Vortex Optics, social media, Instagram, if you like Josh's um, competitive shooter page on Facebook, Instagram, those all give you bonus entries if you haven't liked their stuff already. So last giveaway we did, the per one of the people who won, they, they won through a uh, by, by liking the social media by a bonus uh, entry there. So do take advantage of those. It's going to be, we're going to run this for a week. 
Um, so Tuesday to Tuesday, we're going to announce the winner. 199 of the Shooter's Mindset live. Uh, so next Tuesday, sometime during the show. So I'm only going to announce it there. I might throw it up on Facebook. But if you miss it and you don't contact me, I'm just going to hit another random button and we'll get some other <laughs> other person up there. All right? Don't feel like chasing my brother. No hunting but a people great now. optic. Yeah, no hunting people now. And like I said, I'm friends. We're friends with me and Jen. We know the folks. A lot of the folks over at Vortex, we had them on the show. Ruben, um, we have Ryan I was talking to recently. But the reason why I went with an, a razor off uh, offset was because I was watching Josh's Instagram videos, and that was the main reason. I was like, that shit looks cool. I need it. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah so that's right. That's what I did. It's right here. Boom. Looks <laughs> Looking good. All right. There you go. So that's the direct. So uh, sponsor shooter, he sold it. He sold it for him. There it is. Sweet. All right. Um, let's jump into this one here. Josh, for, so, for those who are unfamiliar with you, uh, can you tell us a little bit more about yourself and how you got involved in competitive shooting? Yeah, for sure. So uh, I've, I've been shooting about three years competitively. Um, I take it real serious, though. So, like, um, I've always been a super competitive guy. I've always been into uh, something – really, really, really heavy. So like, I don't know what it means to be kind of into anything. Um, you know, when I'm, when I'm working and I'm working hard, I'm hundred percent dedicated to whatever it is that I'm, I'm committed to. So, uh, I was in MMA, fought MMA for four or five years during college and, uh, took that serious two, three, four hours a day training. And, uh, you know, it, my education, I took that real serious, ended up with like a 3.97, you know, in college, um, I'm just, I'm just all in or I'm not in one of the two. And, uh, so after the MMA thing wrapped up when I finished up school, um, it, it's real hard to do white collar IT sales, uh, with black eyes, right? So you, that doesn't play well. And, uh, you walk into somebody's office and, uh, you're all beat up and you're not selling anything. And so uh, I learned real quick that I had to give the MMA thing up. And so I was lost for about a year. Didn't have anything to really compete, uh, head to head with. And uh, tried triathlons, tried doing 5Ks, tried doing a lot of that kind of stuff, and uh, wasn't doing it for me. Um, so just started plinking and shooting guns, been doing that most of my life. And uh, we're shooting machine guns one weekend at a local gun shop. Um, we rented a machine gun M16 for an hour or half hour or whatever it was and dumped about 300 rounds. And uh, the guy that was running us, he's, he, he was an IDPA shooter. And uh, he goes, you know, if you're really into, into shooting guns, you should come on out next weekend and give this IDPA thing a try. And so um, 2014, I shot my first IDPA match, um, shot a handful more that year, and then started dry fire, started pushing hard. And uh, since then, I, you know, I shoot about 100, 100 matches a year. Um, I shoot three gun. That's my primary sport. But I'm running USPSA, I'm running Open Division, running PCC. Uh, shoot a little IPSC, um, you know, tactical shotgun, you know, pretty much whatever's going on, uh, as long as it uh, surrounds the the three guns that I'm running in my primary sport, which is three gun. So that that's the game. I'm shooting anything that uh, allows me to go head to head with guys with gear that uh, I like running. Yeah, it's hard. I mean, you kind of set yourself up. I mean, you 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 started with a highly competitive mixed martial arts. It's kind of hard to get that thrill yep. when you yep. kind of hang it up a little bit. <laughs> like shit, what, what is going to give me that thrill now? Like, what are we going to do? Shoot some yeah. guns. There yep. it is, and that, that's how. That's that's actually awesome. Big MMA fan here. Watch it casually. So when I when I saw that you were in, into that at one point, I was like, man, this dude's fucking awesome, right? <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, it was fun. But, I wasn't at a high but, level or anything. It wasn't. It wasn't. Any, it wasn't pro level stuff. It not really. I mean, I was pro. I got paid to, to fight. But, you know, it was local Minnesota, Midwest stuff. Never made the big stage. You know, I was okay. Um, I'm a lot better shooter than I was fighter, you know. Uh, I won the fights I was in, but um, the talent pool, the guys I trained with, had natural abilities that uh, were beyond. I, I could brawl, but that was about it. And uh, some of those guys could get throw down. So it was good. There it is. And recently, you shot the Lucas Oil PCC Championship. That was a big match, you know, highly yeah. marketed. Did yeah. you get a third place finish in that? Yep, yep, finished third. All right. I mean, that was third overall. All right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, you gotta understand. We I talked mean, about this a little earlier. Uh, Two hundred and some odd, three hundred shooters, something like that. 
<laughs> yeah, I'm hard on myself, that. right? You know, yeah, that's all right. I mean, you know, I beat 297 people. It was... <laughs> uh, no, no, it was fun. It was fun. I, you know, usually uh, I'm shooting open division, right? And there's 20, 30 guys in open division at the bigger matches. And so what was fun about the Lucas Oil match was I got to run the same gear as everybody else that was there, super similar, and it was a bigger crew to, to shoot against. Um, a lot of guys that usually are shooting TAC Op Division at a high level that I got to go in and, and go head-to-head -head with, and I never get to shoot against those guys. So it was fun to see where I stuck up, and um, great match. I had a lot of fun down there. Yeah, there was a lot of uh, conversation after that match. Not on the PCC. I mean, a lot of people learned what gear really is running, what's not. Mm -hmm. They learned a lot of things on their rifles. I've heard of a lot of malfunctions out there. What did you learn about your gear, and how did your gear run? Obviously, it had to run good to get third place, so there couldn't be any catastrophic yeah. things. But what, what what did you learn about that match? Yeah, so I didn't have any real issues uh, from a from a hard, hardware or a gear perspective. Everything was was good. Um, what I did notice is that for a match like this, um, I, I run Taylor Freelance, the, the 41 round Glock mags on my PCC, and uh, that's perfect for USPSA because the max uh, round count on the stage is 32 rounds. Right? So you got nine extra rounds. I'm never going to need to do a reload on a field course. Um, this was a different deal. So uh, the average round count on one of these stages was about 50 rounds. And so every single stage, I, I think with one exception, uh, I did a reload, and some of the other guys didn't have to. And so um, I, it didn't cost me a ton, but going into the next match, something like that with the average round count on the stage being 50 rounds, I'm going to have a 55-round mag, and, and we're going to put something like that together. Um, so be honest. Did you go home and, like, time how long it takes you to reload and look at how many seconds put you in third instead of second or first <laughs> and figure yeah. out if it would have put you in a higher yeah. place? Be honest. So, did you do that? I did that before I left the range. Yeah, I, I, know, <laughs> I know my times. So, I, yeah, I figure it cost me probably point, point .3. Uh, it, it takes me longer to reload, but half of them were on the move. So, you know, it probably cost me three-tenths of a second every reload. So multiplied by 10 stages, you know, it cost me three seconds. It doesn't put me in second. I'm still in third place. So it didn't cost me anything, uh, which was a good feeling. Um, I knew you did that math. Though. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right away. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, dude. yeah. Uh, Nikki's just joining us. What's up, Nikki? Hey, guys. Sorry I'm late. I was having computer issues. Right on. Yeah, we talked about you, your your high finish or top 10 finish but, at the lady yay. girl with a gun match, is it? Yeah, the Brownells Ladies Multi Gun Fall Fest presented by a girl and a gun. There you go. How'd you how how'd you do in that match? They're pretty uh, good. I, I, I had some uh some shotgun portions that I feel could have been stronger, but I had not been focusing on shotgun in my practice. But I smoked the long range like a boss. Yeah. And I then, saw the state uh, you posted your pistol work was one for one and your pistol, pistol was kind of like yeah. A, a, kind of like your weakness at a certain you said oh gosh yes because go figure if you dry fire yeah you might <laughs> actually like help so yeah. i did a ton a ton of pistol dry fire leading up to that match like cramming it in in the last like month or so before the match and then i had been shooting a lot of long range ish um the last couple months so my long range game was on on point i had a top top five finish i came in fifth on one of the long range stages that had a 400 yard bonus target, which now for me, I'm like 400 yards is nothing. So of course I was determined to hit the bonus and I did, but I'll post that video later. Boom. Boom. There you go. I think we, we did post one of the stages on the shooters mindset Facebook page earlier today. If you want to check that one out, Jen, you're back from all back from uh, the gap grind. How'd you do? I know you learned a lot out there. Seemed like you were a little bit at a disadvantage with the gas gun, right? Well, I mean, I guess that's a matter of opinion, but I think uh, 308 is a, a – you have to hold a 308 a lot more than a 6.5 or some of those faster rounds. It's a slower round. I mean, it was mine's going at about 2,500 feet per second, so much slower than, like, the 3,100 that some of the 6.5s are doing. So there's a little bit more movement with that, so you got to hold a little more. And the gas guns are not as accurate as bolt guns – according to the long range people. So and 
this was like a pro and an amateur paired up? It was, right? yes. It was, I actually may write up like an article or something about it because it was pretty awesome. It was, I thoroughly enjoyed it. And I think that some of the other genres of competitive shooting could learn something from it. As far as I'm pretty much a newbie to PRS and didn't know what I was doing, but they actually pair you with a pro it's a team match, but the pro also has their own match so that they can get their PRS points. So the pros want to come shoot it because it's a, a match in their series, but, um, and they can win, you know, the pros placed in one cash value stuff, but they also have the team match thing. So you, your pro is vested in helping you do well and they wanted us to do well. I mean, they were helping all of us. In fact, one of the stages that was a, uh, oh gosh, it was like a gauntlet. You had to run. It was a three minute stage. Um, and they each pro like positioned themselves at a different spot as the amateurs ran it. And so that somebody was there to help you at every, at every position. So it was just a neat match for learning. There's so much to learn in long range that it was, it was like taking a two day master class almost because they were right there to help you through everything. So it was a great format. Shannon K and um, Jason Redding and George did a great job with it. I mean, we did, we shot 20 stages in a day and a half. Oh, I mean, shit. Wow. Oh, 300, wow. 350 people shot 20 stages in a day and a half. Wow. wow. I mean, how are the squads? Are the squads a little bit, did it, does it move a little bit faster than like a three gun? Well, you don't yeah. have to reset. So it does move a little faster, but I mean, we were booking it. We shot from first shot was at eight. And I think we shot until almost 6 PM the first day trying to get it done because it was supposed to rain the second day so he wanted us to get through as much as we could and, but they just they keep it moving I mean like when one person is running it they fully expect the next person to be standing there ready to go and literally as soon as they say unload and show clear the other RO is saying do you understand the course to fire and you say mm. yes and they're they're like ready to start you right then at the, the prone stages they would lay out eight shooters prone and they would just go down the line so you don't move until like everybody has shot but everybody's laying there ready on their gun so you, they would go to the next person okay do you understand the course of fire you know engage and, and you'd start and so they they get you through fast they provided lunch they brought lunch down to the stages um so it wasn't like you had to stop and go get lunch you know they brought it down there and it was a box lunch and you just grabbed a box so everybody could kind of eat when they weren't shooting it was just the most efficient thing i think i've ever seen <laughs> it was awesome oh, that's good to hear yeah because they definitely slow running matches it's, i don't know i have one of those guys that i, I get that kind of adrenaline going you know want to get out there and then you have that that maybe there's a hang up on a stage, maybe there were some movers that malfunctioned, and then the squad, you're waiting behind two squads. And it's like, dude, I'm not going to shoot for an hour. You know, it, it, that's hard. I mean, that could happen with any stage. I mean, with any match. But even the littlest stuff, like, man, you know, if it's not running efficient, and, you know, we're just sitting there all day from stage to stage, I kind of, like, lose it a little bit. You know what I mean? Like, I just want to, you know, keep that going. I mean, so they had it that. down to, to thinking through it to where they had the three minute stage. It was, you had to go upstairs and shoot some stuff up there. And then you had to come downstairs and shoot some stuff down here. And of course, everybody's shooting in that direction. So they'd have the first shooter go up and start. And when they came down the stairs, they had the next shooter ready to go. And as soon as they did their first shot here, they had this one go up. So there's one shooting out the top and one shooting out the bottom. So they're simultaneously, it was just very efficient. Maybe all PRS is like that, but it was very well run. <laughs> Nice. I'm digging that. Um, I know. It, it, Nikki, where is he? He's not with you? He was falling asleep, so I told him to go ahead and go to bed. So he is sleeping. Okay, there <laughs> it is. He always, But he says he always wants an open open division shotgun, all right? Oh, gosh. And that's why I'm so glad that he has fallen asleep early tonight so that he <laughs> is not part that. of this conversation. <laughs> yeah, he always well, says he says that he is an open shotgun away from shooting open. All right, let's do it. it no. Yeah. Yeah. So no. I mean, I tr I tried it. You know, I told my story in a, in a pre pre show. I got, I had one of those. What a local shop had one of those Vepper twelves, and we were talking to hunt. I was talking to Hunter Kale a lot, and he was you know obviously shooting a box fed gun. I picked one up. And, you know, they're they're reasonable. They're like five six hundred dollars somewhere in that range for a Vepper twelve, but to really get it set up. I was about to say, how much money did you have to put into it to make it work? It, it was, it was a couple, it was a couple thousand. 
if I wanted now, I could have got out there for cheaper though. You know what I mean? But I wanted contacted the folks at Dissident Arms. I know they were doing a great job and a lot of people are running their stuff. So I immediately just said, yo, let's do this. And they gave me a number and a wait time. And then it just didn't fit me at the time. So I it sat in there. It sat in the safe. It sat, it sat, and then I'm like, screw it. I sold it. And then there was like that what Russian import band or something like that. So like these Segas yeah. and Vepers are kind of going for a little bit extra coin now. So I was kind of like, yeah. damn it, I should have held on. Should have Never sell never sell guns. And I always <laughs> say that you never sell uh, them. I'm actually I actually won a gun. So I won my first gun this past weekend. There you and go. All well, I got a Glock certificate, so I could pick a Glock. Um, but had the Glock certificates all been gone by the time I got there, any other gun I picked up, I probably would have sold. But then I got the Glock certificate. I was like, yes, I'll keep it. I'll keep yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I don't think there's nothing wrong with uh, with selling anything off the prize table anywhere. I, think, I know there's a, a little bit of debate in itself there, but hell, if you want to sell a gun, you want to offset some of the costs you spent going to that match. Mm-hmm. And it usually okay. doesn't offset it. You're no. usually still in the hole. Uh, I'm but, really excited about the Glock certificate. And I know everybody's like, you don't even shoot Glock. It doesn't mean I don't want one. I mean, I have a couple, but yeah. what's, what's the Gen, problem Gen with having 519 or something. I got the Gen 517 coming. 17. Like, I literally got the got home Sunday afternoon, filled out the paperwork, and mailed it Monday. Like, emailed, said, hey, you don't have the Gen 5 listed on here because the certificate's from July. Gen 5 came out in August. Da, 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 da. Can I get a Gen 5? They're like, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Mailed it that day, so they probably got it today. So hopefully they're processing that already. <laughs> yeah, it takes a little while, which it does, but oh, we'll, well. we'll get it. But it's it not doesn't super, matter. It's not like I mean, I don't need it. Yeah. It's not like I'm going to compete with it or anything. And I feel bad because Heath won his very first gun a couple years back, and he gave it to me, and then we sold it. Only, and then it's he only right to give it to him. Well, then he won another gun. And he let me use it for three gun when I first got started. And then he sold it so I could get a fishing kayak. So technically oh, I should, that's a shame. That's should awful. give oh. I should give this to him. I should. should. Yeah. But but he's asleep asleep and didn't hear you say that. But he's asleep and he don't know nothing really much about this conversation. So that's his loss here. There's nothing. Uh, oh. Unless he watches it like tomorrow. Uh, so, but reliable open division shotguns, is there really such a thing? And why go box fed for open division over a two fed one? Yep. So what does I box would fed say, mean? Are you talking box fed, like box ammo fed or like magazine? Yeah, like the box yeah, magazine. Like, oh, magazine. Okay. One of these guys. So the answer is yes, there is a reliable shotgun. Um, one, I did what you did, Anthony, uh, last year, two years ago. Uh, yeah, it was beginning last year. I, I bought a $600 Vepper 12, built a rat rod in the garage, really, um, off internet forums, learned what I needed to learn, and shaped different internals and did all kinds of stuff. And that was 75 25. It was a pretty good shotgun, but it was a typical open shotgun. You know, it'd run really good for three stages, and then the last one of the day, it'd just crash or whatever. Um, yeah. and, and so that was the experience that I was having with it. And, uh, you know, so I, I contemplated moving to a tube gun at one point too, um, just because I couldn't get that thing ironed out. And, uh, so I, I reached out to Mike, uh, and Lynn over at dissident and I, I just told Mike, I'm like, Hey, I can't get this gun to run. Uh, from what I hear your guns run, how do I get mine to run until I can afford one like yours? Right. I literally put it that way. Mm-hmm. Mike's like, well, don't run a tube gun because that's dumb in open uh, because you need a box magazine pit shotgun because uh, unloaded starts, you nobody can compete if they're running a tube gun or X-rail or whatever. If it's an unloaded start and you got 30 shotgun rounds, like you want to be able to put a 20 round stick in that gun right now and then another 20 round stick in it as soon as that's gone. And uh, so Mike was nice enough to uh, to really help me out virtually um, over the phone, tell me what to do to my gun to get it through last season until I could get one of his this season. And so, um, his has been rock solid. I got about 50,000 rounds on it somewhere in that ballpark. And, uh, I swap recoil springs on it and, uh, I swap, uh, the hammer spring on the trigger 
and that is all that I've done to it at this point. Um, other than keep it clean, keep it greased. Don't run oil on that thing. I grease it and uh, just follow all the directions he gave me and run good ammo, gun runs. Um, and so that, that is a the differentiator in, in open is you got a gun that runs and it holds a 20 round magazine. You're, you're good. And so in 50,000 rounds, you said you put through it. You only change those springs one time. No, I changed. I changed them twice, I, and I don't need to. It's not. They're not malfunctioning yet, but um, you just, I'm. Yeah, security uh, blanket there. That's it. Yeah. So like, I I swapped just about everything, all my gun springs at like fifteen thousand rounds, ten fifteen thousand, depending on what it is, um, just so that I can walk into a match and know that the gun's gonna work. Well, I'm not tri flying across the country, shoot a big match, have a bunch of money invested, and have issues because I didn't swap a five dollar spring. You're not going to do yeah. that. Yeah, and it always ha and then when you don't do it, it's like it always happens at a major. It never happens at a <laughs> local when you're shooting in your backyard yeah. or nothing like that. Yeah. It's going to happen when you need it the most for some reason. For sure. I don't know. It's just the gun gods yep. out there. So there it is. Um, definitely want to hit you guys. I had a lifter spring do that to me at oh, yeah. a, re a three gun nation regional, and it was on an all shotgun stage where I had planned to always like left in the gun. So yep. I would always just load with one left, except that one was not, the lifter was not putting it, always on the last round, it was not putting it in, <laughs> uh, you know, in the barrel. So it was locking back, and I'm like, holy, I did, the, I did the math. There should be one left in here, so I'm trying to match saver one in, and there's one sitting on the lifter. So then I just caused a double feed, and I'm like, you got to be kidding me. Mm. Twice on one jungle run where I had the shots planned out to perfectly end with one left and it did it twice. <laughs> My problem with that is when I have it perfectly planned to have one left, it's because I miss one. <laughs> Inevitably, yeah. when I have it like planned out exactly perfect, I'll do something stupid and pull it. For, for some reason, Jen has a funny Glock and likes to break a lot of shit in that. <laughs> hey, I got a new trigger though. Yeah, I saw All that. that. Zev nice. is stand up. Yeah. Well, you, you just you were just running a factory Glock trigger in that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because okay, so see. the Zev broke, and a friend of mine was trying to fix it, and he was like messing with it, and there was one screw he couldn't get out because it was stripped. So he was trying to drill it out, and he needed another screw. So he just called to say, "Can we order another screw? How much is it? I just don't know where to get this exact screw." And in talking, the guy was like, "Well, how old is the trigger?" and he was like, well, I think it's about three years old. And he was like, well, you know, our triggers are better now. So why don't you just send me that one and we'll send you a new one. And so they sent me a new trigger. I mean, sure. it, we, we told them that it, it wasn't like a six month old trigger that broke. I mean, it probably really did have a lot of wear on it. So it was really stand up that they just replaced it. So, nice. but that's, yeah, that's in the meantime, when he pulled that other one out, I just put a stock trigger in it and I ran a couple matches with stock trigger because I wanted to shoot. So. Yeah, that's good to hear from companies. I, I've had one of those triggers a long time ago, those few years ago, and I was I was shooting a steel challenge match, and this, and this is partially my fault, but the, the screw, there's like a uh, over-travel, pre-travel screw. I think one of them backed out, and the gun was just, burr, 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 just going <laughs> off on the target. And I was oh. like, what's going on here? And I sent it to my, my buddy over at DK Custom Triggers, and we just swapped the whole thing. He's like, dude, don't run. Just run factory. I know their triggers have improved over that time. Like I said, this was a lot of years ago. So um, that stuff can happen. It can happen with even someone who does a trigger work. A lot of guys are just doing that over travel, pre travel stuff, even with a stock lock trigger in it. So that can happen. So, yeah, like I said, rat, something that you need. On my rat rod shotgun last year, when uh, I did a little trigger work to it myself, learning how to gunsmith, and uh, I went down yeah. to Three Gun Nation Nationals last year. And uh, we had an all shotgun stage for the most part. I think there were a couple of uh, slugs in it too. And so I had like five bird shot, three slug, seven bird shot, two slug, and one of the 20 round mags. And my, my the sear engagement started slipping and it dumped two or three. Uh, and so all of a sudden the round counts off. I'm like, oh, oh, no. oh no, what is in my gun? Like, you can, uh, That's you know, awful. That was really bad. And That's so risky it, when you start candy caning in a magazine like that. Well, it's no big deal if 
the gun dumps one round per trigger pull. Uh, if it starts slipping, so I, and I you don't miss. Yeah, well, yeah, and you don't miss, or you plan for a miss, or plan for makeup. But um, that was <laughs> that that was a bad stage, uh, and uh, I got a new trigger putting that gun pretty quick after that. I'm like, all right. Did you buy any? I say, did you buy any targets that stage? Yeah, <laughs> I did not. Thank you very much. Uh, I got lucky. I did miss uh, a slug uh, on a five by five. That could have been a bad day. Um, but fortunately I missed it. And so, um, no, I didn't have to buy it. That's good. Doesn't count yeah. if you miss. That is yeah, fun. no, I don't do trigger work anymore. Uh, I leave that to the pros. Well, and I totally didn't blame Zev for this trigger going bad because the gun's three years old and it's been shot a lot. I mean, yeah. it was a yeah. used gun when I got it. So it was shot before I got it even. And so yeah, there's going to no, be when wear you're and tear. When you're tun yeah. When you're tuning guns like this, we're racing these guns out. I mean, that's bound to happen. I'm, I don't, you know, I really don't care who, who's the, who's making a trigger. Even, you know, AR stuff, it happens with AR. It doesn't matter. Things like are you said, you got to do that. Yeah, you got to do that security blanket thing that Josh was talking about and just change it randomly. Yep. Yep. Not the day before you go, though. Uh, change yeah. it about two <laughs> weeks before you go. Uh, yeah, there you go. Go the other way, too. It can be a bad day because you just swapped everything and show up to the match and nothing works. Not you talk about candy cane and there was a guy at the Georgia state match that, and it was just a semi-auto that we were, um, you know, quad loading. He got mixed up and he couldn't remember if he had slugs or what. He stood there on the clock, ejected every round out and started over. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay, oh, that's one way to do it. Cause we're all like, what is he doing? Like he literally put it on his knee and like ejected all of them out, flipped oh. it back and started loading again. I was like, oh, that's oh, a bad shit. day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's talk about. I mean, shit. I don't, did he gain? He probably lost more time doing it that way. But I don't. Well, he had watched multiple people shoot yeah. bird shot at paper and slugs at targets and get penalties, and so he was like, "Nope," <laughs> just started ejecting. I was like, "Well, maybe that was the smartest thing to do." Yeah, yeah. I mean. This is a question I, I, I'm going to kind of kill the topic because I was about to go and I know I know when I go there, it's going to lead to a long conversation. So we're going to flip the script on two optics, running two optics. I know, Josh, you probably get a lot of questions. Hey, why are you running two optics? <laughs> uh, I, keep, I, I keep my response uh, <laughs> copied and pasted on a document yeah. on my desktop because uh, yeah. it's a daily response. Um, and, uh, well, really what it comes down to is um, I, I started shooting open division rifle, right? I've got a scope on it, and then I got my offset dot. Um, when I started shooting for JP last year, uh, I, I wanted to run one of their GMR PCCs as a training tool over the winter. That was the only reason I was going to run it originally is we have a lot of indoor matches here over the winter, and I wanted to keep working on rifle work over the winter. What I noticed was when I'm shooting around walls and stuff, I couldn't figure out why the PCC was so hard to shoot around walls but my normal rifle was so easy for me to shoot around walls. And so I'm like, well, what's different? Um, the only thing that was different was uh, you got the rifle rolled because everything up close with the 223 was with the, the gun canted. And so um, I just chucked one of those canted optics on, on the back behind the primary optic, even though there's no magnification on my PCC. So I'm running a primary optic, red dot, and then another one with the same zero right behind it so that when I'm shooting around a tight corner, or I'm shooting down over a wall, or I'm shooting in any type of awkward hard lean to my weak side, I roll the rifle just because it's comfortable. Um, super comfortable, then I don't have to angle my head real hard to try to get behind the primary optic, and the dot's always in the window and I can just shoot. Um, yeah, and you don't have to switch the gun over to your other shoulder, right? You don't have to do any yeah. of that weird stuff. Yep, yep, yeah, unless yeah. it's drastic. If it's drastic, Sure, you, I mean, you might have to do that, but um, I can cover just about everything on the strong side shoulder as long as the rifle's leaned and I'm, I'm running an offset. Um, right. Yeah. I was pretty bummed about on, under USPSA rules, you can't run two optics, though, right? Is that only a three-gun nation PCC thing? Nope. So USPSA is green light. I can run two. Um, it's basically open. You do what you want. You can run two and a laser if you really want to. Um, yeah. Three. Uh, the the Lucas Oil match was a one optic. That's the only okay. match I've been to so that's far a, that was. Yeah, that's one where optic. I saw I saw some conversation about that, and I was like, nope, just one optic. I was like, well, shit. Yeah. All right, well. Yeah. So I spent. It was two only weeks. that match. 
Yeah, it was just one match. So it took me a couple of weeks. I had to play around with it, trying to figure out uh, how to hit those same leans and just dry fired it, figured it out, got comfortable. So, but what are your uh, what are your PC what are your PCC zeros on your on your razors? Fifty. I, I zero everything at fifty. Um, my pistol's fifty. My PCCs are fifty. Um, I want to I want to know on. I, you know, if you do it 15, let's just say you zeroed at 15, which a lot of guys like to do, 15 or 20 yards, um, and then you got a 50-yard target, you have to aim below what where you want to hit, right? Because the bullet is still rising, and and then you got to aim at the bottom of the A zone or whatever. And I don't like that. That cr- makes me have to think about distance and target and all of that, and I don't want to think about anything while I'm running the stage. Um, so if I set it at 50, I know that all the targets are going to be within that, and the bullet's going to keep rising. Um, for the most part, to that 50. And at any, at any point, I just aim high up close. If I'm within 10 yards, I'm aiming about an inch high, inch and a half high. And then uh, everything within 50, I'm just aiming where I want to hit. Um, and I don't have to think about anything. Oh, there it is. Well said. Havoc uh, Legion shooting team says hello. Checking in. Boom. What's up, dude? Uh, let's go to the discount corner stuff, Jen. If you want to start us off here, we'll announce the giveaway for those who just joining us. If you didn't, you know, if you didn't hear in the beginning, we'll announce that again. So you can get a discount on Carbon Arms at CarbonArms.us using the code TSM10. You can get 10% off of a chest rig or shell caddies, the best shell caddies on the market, um, AR hand guards extension tubes for shotguns, all kinds of goodies there. So go check them out at carbonarms.us. Boom. And uh, Nikki, you, got any? you can oh, what do you got? get oh. 10% off at the Shears Mindset store with my <laughs> discount code that is cooler than Nikki's and mine is Jen TSM 10. And you know, I'm cooler than someone. Her, so. Someone did use, someone did use Jen TSM 10 this morning here. His name, first name's, First name's Thomas. I'm not going to say his last name live. I don't know if you want to do that. But use TSM, well, Jen TSM team. Thank you, Thomas, for using my code. I'll remember that, Thomas. I'll remember that. <laughs> Just so. Uh, I think but, um, you're up there. Oh, and a, a bunch of people kept asking me about my Carbon Arms chest rig thing that I, I made. Well, Heath made because he's my parts manager. So thank you, Anthony, for giving out the TSM 10 code on those posts for people asking about it. Yeah. Reminded me to do it too. Um, discounts. Check out American Defense Manufacturing. Use discount code three gun ten. So number three, the word gun, and the number ten to save ten percent on all American Defense items that are not serialized. Uh, then I have my frenzies discount codes. So hit me up on Facebook or Heath up on Facebook or Team Clevenger up on Facebook. We can save you fifteen percent off Criterion barrels and twenty percent off of True Spec. So if you want to look pretty awesome out of the range and it's getting cold. So get you some jackets, um, mm-hmm. all that stuff. I can hook you up with 20% off. Um, true spec. Check out Red Hill Tactical. Use discount code Clevenger for your Kydex holster and mag pouch. And then also when you're checking out the TSM store and you don't want to use Jen's code because her letters are all over the keyboard and maybe you're just one hand in it. Um, mm-hmm. Use TSM Nikki. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Nikki TSM One hand in it. <laughs> you, <laughs> oh, Nikki. you just said that, Nikki. <laughs> There's one hand in it. Man. Use oh. Nikki TSM 10. It is closer if you're one handing it. It's all right there. <laughs> it is. Uh, true story. Yeah. I'm uh, so the, gonna just be quiet. Does uh, Criterion offer a nine millimeter barrel? They do. They okay. sure do. I don't know the details on it because I don't have one yet. But um, I think the PCCs that Amer- American Defense is making is equipped with Criterion barrels. Okay. There you for go. nine millimeter. Uh, Josh, any discount codes on the fly that you know of for sponsors or anything like that? Uh, anybody I shoot for, uh, anybody that's listening can go ahead and just send me a PM. I'll get you hooked up. So, um, I don't necessarily have codes for everything, but uh, I'll get you set up with the right gear at good prices if you need something for sure. There you go. Um, discount corner on my end, shop.tacticalship.com, TSM 10, save you 10% off the entire website. Also good in their retail, retail store if you're in St. Peter's, Missouri area. Yell TSM 10 at the cashier, and they will hook you up. 
Uh, Tandem Cross, uh, TSM Show, all caps for free shipping on the Hive Grips for the Smith & Wesson Victory 22 pistol. Uh, Dewey Rods, if, uh, DeweyRods.com, TSM 15, 15% off the entire website. Uh, folks over at TerranTacticalInnovations.com, if I don't have it on the in a TSM shop, um, you can check out Terran Tactical Innovations for base pads and all the accessories and gunsmithing work. TSM 10 saves you 10% off all that stuff. Uh, UM Tactical, TSM 10 for 10% off their entire website too. We went over Carbon Arms, Rand CLP, Mindset 16 for 15% off all Rand CLP products at RandCLP.com. And Red Hill Tactical, if you don't feel like using Nikki's, you can use TSM 10 too. Whatever. <laughs> there you go. Um... And I He's think that's hating it. on my discount codes. I'm not going to get credit for <laughs> shit because of y'all. <laughs> and if, you're one -handing it, be if you're one-handing it, what's your discount code at, at Red Hill? Clevenger. Clevenger. Oh, that's all over the place. Mm -hmm. I so can't even argue that one. I can't. TSM 10. There you go. <laughs> um, <laughs> what do we got here? Um, jo Josh, what's the one stage you walk up to and go, oh, shit? Is it wow. long range stuff? A lot of uh, maybe a lot of steel partials or movers. So uh, traditionally, it's long range. Um, at my property or at my house in the backyard, I can shoot up to um, about thirty yards. I've got solid ground, and so my pistol work, I've, I'm trained up. Shotgun work, I'm trained up. Um, but beyond the thirty yards, I've got low land and it's wet, and so I haven't done much with it with rifle work um, over the years. And so rifle, long range, anything over a couple hundred yards, um, I typically had practice on the clock and a major because that's the only place I shot it. And so I'd fall way behind on every one of those stages. And so I'd walk into a match and see a long range stage and know I've got to make up five seconds on every other stage if I'm going to be in the mix at the end of this thing because uh, I know I'm going to lose 20 on that long range. But um, the last – Five weeks I've uh, been getting ready for Three Gun Nation Nationals, and I've got about 4,000 rounds of long range training in in the last five weeks. Um, pushing real hard. I had about a 400 round session today just after work. Came home. Um, I'm doing simulated long range in the backyard, so I've got a 100 yard range, um, and I've got two and four inch steel targets, shootsteel.com targets. And um, so two and four MOA, tough, tough shots i got awkward positions I'm working on, and it's really about positions and trigger work. And so I'm learning the fundamentals of the long-range game in simulation out back, and then uh, once every couple of weeks I'm, I'm going out to some property and shooting out to four or 500 yards and making sure that uh, all the work I'm putting in is going to pay off. And so it's not going to be long-range anymore, but traditionally that's what it has been. There it is. So the long-range stuff, man, that's Nikki's strong suit. If I see, yeah, if I see anything – if I was shooting a three-gun match, I seen I have no problem with partials, steel. But if I see anything like past two hundred, mm -hmm. I'm like, dude, I don't fucking know what's going on at this point. We're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna, we're gonna be slinging them. You know, uh, gonna be like, I'm gonna take one good shot and then let off two more. Just, yeah. just so if if they just move oh, a little uh, crooked, it'll hit. Hopefully, yeah, yeah. it'll just be three shots. Just boom, boom, boom. All right, let's move along. Hopefully, that's the sound we get. So. Uh, spray what else and pray got? does not really work on long range. I'm just going to No, you. it's totally different. It spray is. Spray and pray what? does not work. Well, that's, it that's doesn't what matter I got, how man. close you are to Jesus. If you are spraying, <laughs> it is not working. <laughs> He's just going to laugh at you. He's going to be like, I told you. Yeah. Because you move on. You know, I'm not going to go to war. I'm just going to bum, 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 and let's move it. You know, no hit or not. Let's well, move it. Well, that used no. to be that should, that's the thing to do. Like, you could even game it in that manner. Um, I know when I was terrible at long range i would give three good shots and move on because the penalties weren't crazy but now they're making the further targets cost you even more penalties for not getting yeah. the hit that it's almost like you need to put in a good solid effort mm. to try and hit them because a miss is 20 seconds or more what's really fun yeah. is in prs when you can't move on till you hit that target <laughs> yeah mm. that would suck <laughs> Oh, man. Yeah, so I'm going to play a little of that game next year, too. I'm going to play Gas Gun uh, PRS just with my three-gun rifle and my 1x6 scope, and I'm just going to get comfortable shooting heavy 223 bullets. I might play with – there's a new caliber coming out from Federal, and 
we're going to put uh, JP Upper together. It's a small frame AR and uh, one of these high performance super calibers that's going to be coming out here in the next couple of weeks. I'm going to play with that a little bit too. But uh, gas gun, PRS, just get comfortable. I want to win long range stages now and not, you know, be worried about them, make it a strength and just push. So yeah. that's, that's where my focus is right now, just getting that piece up to par with the rest of the shooting. I know when you uh, what's your training regimen like uh, for an upcoming major match? I know this kind of varies from you know we talk to a lot of people it kind of varies. Some people could just kind of relax, you know they do some they just kind of stick with their normal dry fire maybe you know their normal routine and some people really push it. Um, what is yours like? Yeah, so um, mine's pretty consistent. So depending on what the match is, I spend half hour a day doing dry fire. Um, this next match is a three gun match. Um, and so it's the three gun nation national. So I'm pushing, uh, two days a week, I'm dry firing each gun. So, uh, six days a week of dry fire on a uh, single gun, just one gun at a time for about a half hour, working, make changes, transitions, movement, um, all, all the basics, fundamentals. And then, uh, on the, on the seventh day, I'm working transitions. So one day I'll have rifle and I'll dump into get the pistol out and work some quick transitions between guns. Um, so that's the dry fire piece. And, and it is. I'm on uh, the dry fire thing. I know that I, I, I've got a major every month. So I'm going to travel somewhere around the country or wherever at least every four weeks. And so there's really not the time for me to mm -hmm. just be like, hey, I'm just going to cruise this next week because I got a major coming. Like, uh, I would be taking way too much time off over the course of the year of my training to do that. So um, I push. Uh, I take the last two days before a major off just to let my hands heal. My hands get real sore from all the dry fire. Um, but live fire practice, uh, you know, I've got probably about 3000 rounds a week, uh, depending on whatever guns I'm working. Um, and you know, that's three sessions. So, you know, about a thousand rounds per session, three times a week, getting out and working on whatever it is that I think is going to be my gap at the next match. So if it's three gun nation, you know, most of it's in the bays, it's going to be a lot of, uh, base style, uh, you know, three gun shooting, but. Um, it's total time, so long range is a ticket. So that's why I'm putting in so much time and energy on the long range right now. Um, just getting ready. So it's always specific to the match and specific to whatever's coming up next month. There you go. Um, forgot to announce the giveaway here during the discount corner portion of the show, but we have a giveaway link posted on the Shooter's Mindset Facebook page. It's our most recent post. If you're watching the show right now and you want to enter the giveaway, we are giving away a Vortex Optics Razor. 3 MOA red dot courtesy of Josh and the folks over at Vortex Optics. So that's awesome. Um, I don't know. You can never really have too many optics if you're in this game. <laughs> I mean, it seems like I have, I always say, everybody knows me, I have builds and I have no glass. It's like the last thing. It's like the gun's just sitting there and no glass. Because I don't, I, I don't want to put cheap ass glass on a quality gun, you know? So yeah. it's like I got to save the coins. Usually something comes up. Like I said, we finally got glass for the 308. We finally got the PCC squared away. I got one gun sitting in there with no glass. So, and we're working on that too there. So, um, to enter this, it's going to last uh, seven days. It starts, uh, obviously, it started at 9 Eastern during the show. It's going to end, uh, we're going to end at 9 p.m. Uh, next Tuesday for episode uh, 199. Shit, it's almost two episode, uh, 200 episodes of the Shooter's Mindset now that I look at these numbers. Um, I know. I was just wondering who we're gonna have for two hundred. I do not have even a guest scheduled for two hundred. I have a guest next next week, and I don't have a guest for two hundred. So, I gotta look into that. I gotta see what we're gonna do. I know episode one hundred. We had Nils Jonathan and John McLean on at one time, and that was a. <laughs> and Jess, uh, wasn't Jess on that one too? Yeah. Well, Jess wasn't invited. She just showed up. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was, just, it was like it was like dude. It was but really we love like, Jess. Like, yeah, I remember. I remember the comment, and they're like, "We came here to see Nils Jonathan. Well, who's the chick sitting with him doing all the talking?" And I'm like, ah, "Well, that's what it, that's what you get." So whatever. But yeah, that's uh, it's funny because every time we had Nils on it, it, we had him on with somebody else. So we never had just Nils on the show. Um, but yeah, so we'll see what we're gonna do for episode 200. But episode 199, we will announce the winners of this giveaway. There's gonna be one winner. We're going to announce it live. So if you're entering, please take advantage of all the bonus uh, entries. 
that you can get for liking Vortex's uh, Vortex Optics Facebook, Instagram, and like Twitter. Same thing with Josh. I got all his stuff in there. And if you like, if you haven't liked the Shooter's Mindset stuff, that stuff's in there. Nikki, uh, Jen stuff's in there. So take advantage of all the bonus stuff. You can get multiple entries into this giveaway to win. All right. Uh, lastly, I think this is pretty much the last question. If anybody has any live, please plug those in now. But Josh, any upcoming goals, matches? You, I mean, you talked about Three Gun Nation Nationals, or any yeah. like products that your sponsors are kind of you can talk about. Yeah, yeah. So um, certainly looking forward to the national match, um, Three Gun Nation match, and then uh, trying real hard to get this uh, Ipsic uh, 2018 shotgun thing ironed out. So um, we're trying to put the team together now, or USPSA is, and uh, I want more than anything to go to France next year and represent the U.S. and shoot against uh, the Russians with a Russian shotgun and go try to get yeah. them on for their money. Uh, so that, that's – if I could get on that team, I'm going to shoot uh, a, a lot of shotguns. So that will be my primary goal of 2018 is to represent the U.S. well um, over there. Um, so – Working real hard politically and, uh, and and doing all the things I think I need to do in order to be considered for that team right now. Um, that'd be good. For new product, for some of that kind of stuff, you know, Federal's putting out something that's pretty exciting that's specific to the USPSA and IPS and uh, IDPA game. So they're putting out what they call their their um, action pistol line of Syntec ammo. So I've been running. Uh, this stuff, so this is my PCC ammo. I've been running the 115 grain stuff all season in uh, my open gun for three gun and then in, in PCC. And they're putting out 124 grain now and then 150 grain um, that are designed around power factor for USPSA and IDPA. So um, gamer ammo at uh, non-gamer ammo price, right in the same ballpark as what uh, you're looking at for the full metal jacket. American Eagles or anything like that, and so that'll be that'll be nice to be able to get some 150 grain soft shooting powder puff ammo for your Glocks or whatever you want to shoot. Um, that'll perform well out of the box, and you don't have to reload the stuff because uh, I reloaded for a long time, and I'm grateful that I can dedicate that time today to dry fire and not uh, sitting behind yeah. the bench. Yeah, I hear that, and I was in the same boat. I reloaded at one time, and, you know. And, you know, I've had these, you know, someone popped up, uh, said, you know, hey, what's the lightest trigger pull you can run on a Glock? And, dude, I've had two-pound trigger pulls, and I can only run Federal and Federal Gold Match Primers in that thing. And, you know, yeah. I remember, you know, I, I just don't have the time and the space to put a reloader up, so I'm not reloading. So I'm pretty much buying factory ammo. Uh, I mean, does anybody really dislike Federal Premium? I mean, I, I never heard it before. I've never yeah. tried their Simtech line. Okay. Uh, tons of American Eagle stuff. I know their 147 American Eagle was loaded a little bit on the hot side for yeah, a, hot. Shooters. Yeah. <laughs> a little on the hot side. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but you know the Federal Champion stuff usually ran excellent. Um, yeah. You can you know you can expect you know if you're not reloading your stuff and tuning it, you know factory ammo is going to run a little hotter than what you load it most of the time. Yeah. But now you got their action line coming out. Yeah, so that's cool. You know, I, uh, I I despise reloading enough that. When I'm shooting USPSA open, I'm typically just shooting factory minor ammo. So I run USPSA open against uh, all the guys and, and try to keep up with minor guns just so I don't have to load major. Uh, <laughs> unless it's uh, unless it's for a major match. Then I'll load up you know, 10,000 rounds or something and then practice for a while with it. But um, I would much rather just pull it out of a box and load some magazines and shoot some guns. Yeah, yeah, that's what, that's what I'm feeling. Nick, you got a question you want to throw on? Yes, and because I gotta know, I missed the beginning, so I don't know if when you talked about how you got involved in competitive shooting or anything, did you me mention this? But did you start in tac ops practical and then move to open? Why open? Like, yeah, what That's happened? <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, well, so I I've been shooting USPSA a little while and uh, shooting with some really talented open shooters up here in Minnesota, and so I was shooting, um, starting to shoot a little open and pistol and that's just a drag race right i mean you got 32 rounds and you got a mag change and you might get that done in 12 or 13 seconds you know uh, that is just hosing the whole time and then uh, I, i'm running around a pretty darn nice uh shotgun and m2 all built up for tack ops and 
I'm sitting there standing around. I'm, I'm moving, but I'm putting four in the damn gun at a time. And it, it just felt like this is not what I came to do. I came to go fast. And uh, so um, it, it just wasn't, it wasn't doing it for me. I wanted to play three gun because I love the rifle and the pistol game, but I hated the shotgun loading. I could do it. I could throw quads. Uh, I wasn't as fast as some of the guys, but didn't want to dedicate the time and energy to get good at that skill that I thought was, that was dumb. Um, you know, I mean, it's a popular thing, you know, more power to everybody that competes in, in that against all the guys that are competing in it, but was not that's what, that, See, that's what my husband says. He's just tired of loading <laughs> shotgun. And I'm like, yeah. oh, it's not a reason. That's not a reason. But obviously, it a it's a very popular reason. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's a yeah. Move to open because then you just don't want to load a shotgun anymore. Well, and I load it, you know, like, you know, I can still load that shotgun. I'll, I'll throw a new 20 round stick in and in, in, you know, 1.3 seconds, you know, and I'm ready to rock. So I can load it, but I load it in a different way. Um, the other piece was uh, one of the first three gun matches I ever saw on TV. It was on some shooter channel and it was Clint Upchurch going head to head with Jerry Miglin. And uh, those two guys were, were just it was a tight match. I think they showed two or three stages. I'm like, I'm not going to run a gun like Jerry. I'm like, I'm going to run a gun like Clint. So I'm like, that thing looks cool. He, he's going fast. And, uh, you know, so that was what I always envisioned three gun as is open shotgun. And, uh, so I just dove in and like, you know, we were talking earlier, I don't, I don't do anything halfway. And so as soon as I, as soon as I got into it and was bored with a piece of it, I wanted to mix it up. So I dove all in. Open. I'm so glad you brought up Clint Upchurch. I like him. Yeah, my, where's he, where's he, where's where's he been recently? Have you guys seen him? On, I haven't. Yeah. I have not. He's local. He actually lives in South Carolina, um, and would attend Clinton matches. But he's just working, doing the family okay. thing, I guess. I haven't seen yeah. him out on the range. He's yeah, he came out early in the year. I think he came to he came to something at the Clinton house. Yep, Jerry, uh, Clint, and I okay. shot the. East regional, regional there. Yeah, yep. that's right. He was at the regional. Uh, that's the only match I've seen him actually come out to. Um, but again, he literally lives like 30 or 45 minutes from the Clinton house. So it wasn't like he had to travel far. Yeah. Yeah. He's at all for that. So old, old, old G's with the box fed, man. He's always yeah. running. And he can bang too. That dude he's can fast. shoot. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he still doesn't even show up. Like not, not saying he doesn't practice or anything. I don't know his personal practice routines, um, but he'll still show up at a match after not seeing him out in the circuit in a while and still just burn Coming it off. down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 There it is. Uh, if we don't have any live, I think we can be, begin to wrap this one up. Jen, I don't know if you have anything. Nothing live. All right. I think, uh, let me just run a check real quick and oh, we're good. Just going to go take, take this one down. Shout out, Jim. I'll start off with you. What do you have? I uh, want to shout out the Lansing Tactical for that awesome 308 that I lugged around, all 15 pounds of it, um, for the whole two-day match. Anyway, it was awesome, and it was actually no malfunctions, and that thing was pretty daggum accurate. For it to be a 308 going against six fives, it was definitely a much better shooter than than me, better arrow than the Indian. Um, so that was great. Also, Night Force Optics for the awesome scope that I ran in this match that was awesome too zt knives load up ammunition sharpshooters of augusta and shooters of augusta grizzly targets lucas oil um, carbon arms and samson manufacturing operation x and just another shout out to zev for being a good company that stands behind their product and uh, replacing that trigger was really stand up i did not expect that so very nice uh, nick what do you have i am trying to find i'm going to do something a little bit different I want to call out the sponsors for the A Girl and a Gun Women Shooting. Well, I was going to be nice and do that, but obviously where they said that the list of sponsors was is not here. So obviously I don't know what is going on. You're supposed to have it memorized, Nikki. See, it says see full, okay, see full list She doesn't even below. know her own sponsors without looking. <laughs> I know. Don't. I don't want to talk about it, okay? <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. I found the list. I found the list. I found the list. I found the list. Okay, so I'm going to shout out all the sponsors of the Brownells Ladies Multi Gun Fall Fest. So, title sponsors: Brownells, Target sponsors: Red Stitch, Red Stitch Targets, um, Troy Industries, Ranger Proof. Ranger Proof did something really cool. 
they covered the match fees for um, two LEOs and two military females to shoot the match. So thought that was really cool. Um, they had side matches sponsored by Red Stitch Targets and Gunfighter Targets. And then I got to thank Glock for the certificate I picked up off the table, Voodoo Tactical, JP Enterprises, Safari Land, Gun Goddess, Mossberg, Swabits. I don't know what those are. Um, to clean your gun. You don't know what a Mossberg is? No, the Swabits. No, Swabits. Swabits. Oh, the Swabits. It's to clean your gun. Oh, yeah. We did an article on that on the Shooter's mm -hmm. Mindset. They're actually very interesting. Yeah, you keep saying like that. It. These articles on the Shooter's Mindset. I, got, I guess. <laughs> Do you ever look at our website? <laughs> Apparently not. You don't. Uh, you don't. I, I have her phone on. number up on there. I have her phone number up on there by her, her bio, and people start calling her randomly. She'll never know where it came from. Oh, gosh. All right, hold on. I'm almost done. Benelli, Timony Triggers, Trigicon. Gosh, I can't even say some of these. Obsidian. Obsidian I don't feel arms. so bad now. See? Hex. Sponsored by Haraz Casino. Haraz. Hotel. I still Haraz. love Haraz. <laughs> still my favorite thing ever. Hex Mag, Spider Co., Breda. Right on, written, written, right on. I don't know. X Rail, Burris, Bond <laughs> Arms. That's all I got. That's it. I think that's all of it. Valkyrie Inc., Offhand Gear, Practice Score, Walter, Patriot Case, Sierra Bullets, <laughs> Tough Product. Okay. I've, I've gone Man, too far. That's I've a gone, well, <laughs> say, that's I've a gone well far. sponsored match there. <laughs> yes, it's, it keeps companies. going. Yeah. But, Josh, you just have to know that when we went to Vegas, we were going to go. <laughs> Yeah, I was, it, was a, it, was Twin, it was at Twin Peaks, man. It, you guys are telling this. You guys are telling this story way too much, but I'm gonna tell it. All right. <laughs> You're gonna tell it. Go ahead. You tell it. Yeah. We were, we at, were Twin at Twin Peaks. Peaks. Right? We had a. Yeah, this is after a few hard liquors. All right. <laughs> Cranberry vodka. I said, I said wait, I don't know. Somehow I brought up the Haraz Casino. I'm like, shit, it's right next to Haraz Casino, and then everybody's like, what'd you say? I'm like, the Haraz. No, but Casino. nobody noticed it right away. He just kept no, talking, man. and then finally, I was like. What did you say? Haraz Casino? Where is that? It was, my second, it was only my second time in Vegas. I wasn't sure. I was like, is there such a place? Is this a cool thing to do? <laughs> and then finally I was like, holy shit. He means Harrah's. Yeah. Harrah's Casino, not Haraz. You, see, you guys got the point, though, in the end. <laughs> and now it'll forever be Haraz now. See? I call yeah. it Haraz all the time. When me and Heath are That's talking, awesome. we always sit called Haraz. Probably the best spot you can stay for SHOT Show, by the way. It's walking distance, so Haraz is where you want to be. Just saying. But they're all booked up now, so if you if you waited this long, I try I to get in a, there. It's I, have booked up. I have plane tickets, but I don't have a hotel room. Yeah, plenty of those. Sleeping on the street? <laughs> Yeah, probably find a couple of Mandalay Bay for a good price. Too soon? Might be. There Maybe. you go. <laughs> uh, you, uh, Josh, what do you got? Shout out, man. Yeah, I mean, for me, I, I've got so many good partners, and, uh, you know, I'm super grateful to be running some of the best gear on the planet. So, you know, from a pistol perspective, I never shot anything like the Atlas guns. Um, sweet shooting guns, custom guns, semi-custom guns, and, uh, JP rifles, dissident shotguns, and uh, all the glass I could need from Vortex. I got tons of glass on my guns, so uh, lucky to have a good partner that uh, can equip the gear. So, if you need some cool custom guns, anything like that, that you want to get into open division or tech op, or you're shooting pistol matches and you need a limited gun or anything like that, let me know. I'll get you set up, get you a deal. There you go. Uh, shout out to Mario. No, thank you. <laughs> don't and don't run into my husband anywhere. Like so, just if you I'll, see I'll send, it, I'll send him a PM uh, in the morning when he gets. I was like, if, if you see him at Three Gun Nation National, just keep walking, please. Just send I'm him a photo. Of, just send him a photo I'm of a, your shotgun on me, and don't say nothing. I'm gonna fill this up with some bird shot, and I'm gonna let him go to go to town on. No, uh, no. What you need to do, it. Josh, is you need to find an old magazine and just write Heath on it, and <laughs> give it to him at nationals. Uh, yeah, find yeah. something to put that in. <laughs> like here, this is for when you get your shotgun. I already got you a gift. I like no, it. don't do that. It's a terrible idea. It'll cost no. you that, no so? more than four, four grand. It'll be all right. Yeah. <laughs> that that mag what holds twenty? That big mag. I know we got some questions of it when I posted the picture on the shooter's mindset announcing the yeah, show. Yeah, so these are twenties. That's my typical mags that I'm starting stages on. Uh, I've got uh, drums too, so I run a twenty-five round drum 
on any stage that's 22 rounds or less, um, just so that I've got a couple of makeup shots. If I know I'm going to reload anyway, I'll run these because these are super durable. I can drop them on the ground and step on them, and they'll be fine for the next stage. Um, but, yeah, so I'm running 20 rounders, 12 rounders, 25 rounders. Um, as long as you tune them and you test them, they're good to go. There you go. And that run, that's a spliced mag, right? It runs on, is that a, you need a whole different spring for that, or is that running on factory spring? No, it's a single spring. You know, the splice companies, uh, the old school ones, would recommend putting uh, the two springs and then putting a follower in between. I've never yeah. seen that work really well. Um, so these just didn't put together a single spring for the longer mags that it works. You know, that's, that you need to run one spring. There you go. All right, shout out to my end here. Shout out to the folks over at Tactical Shit for supporting the show for a couple of years now. We appreciate them. Folks over at Tandem Cross, if you want to email me, the shooter's mindset at gmail.com is a good way to, to do that. Definitely thanks to Josh for coming on here and sharing some knowledge with us for a few hours here on the show. Appreciate that. Mm -hmm. uh, folks over at Gear Nation USA, check out their apparel line. Check out their Facebook page, Gear Nation USA over on Facebook. He seems to be always out of stock. But he's a one-man show. We have their, his uh, apparel over on uh, the Shooter's Mindset shop. But he's working on some new designs, so stay tuned for that. Uh, folks over at Rise Armament for their triggers, fantastic work. I'm also running their 308 AR-15 gas gun there that I just got some Vortex 5x25 glass for. Nice. Look, really looking forward to that. Uh, and the folks over at Terran Tactical Innovations, we'll kind of wrap this one up there. That'll do it for episode 198 of the Shooter's Mindset. Thank you guys for tuning in tonight. We're out of here.